All right, good morning, outdoorsmen. We're getting ready to head out on a kayaking adventure today. So, um, settle in and get ready for today's fabulous adventure. Let's get outdoors. Morning. I heard you say it. Morning. Don't thank me yet. Give me your. Sounds good. My favorite friend. Tony and Tony. that it gets nice and clear. We'll be able to see all the grasses that are on the seafloor and uh, possibly some other animals. Be on the lookout, by the way. We do have things like dolphins and turtles. If you see a turtle, you're probably going to be the only one that sees that animal unless he or she is hurt, which we don't really see. We very rarely see a hurt turtle. But uh, typically what turtles do is they pop up to the surface for a second, get a big gulp of air, and they dive back down. Uh, if they can't dive, then they're hurt and we'll try to rescue them. Uh, very rarely does that happen. So, if you see a turtle, I'll believe that you saw it, but I don't think anybody else will get to see it. On the other hand, dolphins, if they feel like it, they'll come up, they'll uh, play with us, give us a little show. If they don't feel like it, they'll keep doing their own thing. Very, very smart animals, dolphins. So, we'll, if we see them, we'll let them do uh, whatever they want. But if you see a dorsal fin, which is the top fin of the uh, dolphin, it's very likely 
not sharks. And I don't know if anybody saw that, but there's a blackbird in front and off to the left of the boat. That's a frigate. Birds are a lot easier to see than the other animals that live in the water. But uh, so that is a pretty cool bird. Here she dove down. I think that's a she trying to catch a fish. They can't get their wings wet, so they'd be very, very careful. Fishy, but uh, so maybe she caught it. She looks like she's flying away. They just swallow the fish and uh, fly away. We have indoor plumbing, reliable fresh water, AC, all those fabulous innovations. We also have good uh, weather predict well, more or less good weather predictions. We can predict when hurricanes go. So it's a fun little spot nowadays, but uh, didn't always used to be quite so nice down here. I think in the middle of the summertime with no AC, mosquito control, all of the mosquito-borne diseases that uh, were around back then. Kind of a hard life, but Key West does have a very strategic location, not so much in this day and age when we have airplanes, engines on boats, cars, a road that's directly connected to Key West. It's easier to travel now than it was 500 years ago. But if you're talking about ocean-going travel, which is how the world was uh, discovered back in the day, this is right along a major thoroughfare. So past that barrier reef, about 15 miles or so, it's always moving, we have the Gulf Stream. If you don't know what that is, it's a big current. It's not like a giant river in the Atlantic. It starts right along here, floats conveniently along the Florida Keys, up along North America, all the way up north, and eventually occurs over to Europe. And this current of water is very, very, very important because it always flows about four or five miles an hour, just around eight kilometers. And uh, this is important because if you're on a sailboat, which most people were, especially in the 15, 16, 17, 18, 1900s, if the wind isn't blowing, and if it isn't blowing in the right direction, you're not gonna see a dark, you're not gonna go anywhere at all, uh, because uh, your sails rely on wind to work, right? So what the people did when they were stuck in the middle of the ocean is maybe they pull out some oars and paddle, but it's very difficult to paddle a heavy boat, especially. Uh, the Vikings did it, but they were really close to uh, land, so they had good food, they weren't suffering from scurvy, stuff like that, and they also had smaller boats and lots and lots of people on them. But European explorers, well, they didn't have that option, so they were just like ducks out there, running out of water, running out of food. Mutinies, terrible, terrible, until they discover these currents of water. And there's actually a circle of them in between Europe and the New World. This is the only reason why Europe was able to come here uh, so easily, which wasn't that easy. It took months, but uh, they were able to come here. And uh, we've got one of the biggest ones. This uh, Gulf Stream was discovered, at least by Europe. The first person who wrote about it is Ponce de Leon. He got uh, credit for discovering Key West, Florida, lots of things around here. So he discovered that Gulf Stream. And once he discovered it, Lots and lots and lots of boats tried to hop on it because it was usually uh, smooth sailing exactly where you wanted to go, which was further up in North America or back over to Europe. <laughs>
extra mangrove, and then on the inside we have black mangroves, and then we also have white mangroves. But those tend to like islands with a bit more land, and the uh, majority of these mangrove islands out here don't have any land for them at all. They just have some built-up sediment, but like if you stand on that, you're gonna sink down like two feet. Um, Go ahead. That's it. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. You just paddle. I'm the steer. like rowboat type of things, they take their people and their valuables out into these hurricane holes. And they would do so because mangroves can withstand winds up to 165 miles per hour. So they're super, super sturdy. Um, these roots go down about four to eight feet, depending on the tree. Um, and actually still today, if a squall were to hit us, we're required to take you guys into the nearest hurricane hole too, um, which I've actually had to do a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then if you look over here, you can see all these little baby roots. Um, those are the roots of the black mangroves. These are the black mangroves in here. Um, they have different types of roots. These are called walking roots. Um, not different than these guys. But yeah, I love the hurricane holes. They're my favorite part of them. Yeah. And I was telling them, it's so cool in here today. Like sometimes it's really a, a buggy. It's almost bad. It's a long time. But it feels like a rainforest. It feels good in here. Yeah. within the city limits of any town or city in the U.S. All right, at Los Dorsman, we are cruising down here to the southernmost point.
We are at the southernmost point in the continental United States. There's a storm a brewing off in the southern sky. All right, outdoorsmen, just wrapping up the snorkeling and kayaking adventure. The opportunity to get out on the water was incredible. I, I love being on the water. Doesn't matter whether swimming in it, paddling, hunting, being on the water is something I really enjoy doing. Um, I was a little worried about using my iPhone to actually film underwater. Um, it, I thought it turned out pretty good. I would love to get your feedback and what you thought. I thought it did really well. Um, full disclosure, I did have to take a day to dry it out, but it was probably close to 10 minutes that I had it under the water back and forth. Uh, I thought it was really amazing to see the fish and the stingrays under the water. There was an eel in the hole that I was kind of circling around, but we couldn't get it to come back out. There were just too many people around. Uh, kayaking in the mangroves were, were really very interesting. Um, the fact that they use the kind of hiding holes inside to weather hurricanes years ago was something that I found very interesting and uh, definitely want to give kudos to the danger staff that was the name of the group that we were out with out of Key West there um, they did a very very nice job taking care of us they were very knowledgeable and made us feel welcome and safe the entire time so until next time get outdoors <laughs>